Hello, I am Mike Bradley, the Senior Manager for Product Applications at Thermo Fisher Scientific. If you've been to any conferences or trade shows looking at analytical instrumentation or analytical techniques lately, there's one word that seems to be popping up more and more frequently, and that's the word Raman, Raman spectroscopy and Raman instrumentation. What we'd like to do over these next few videos is give you some idea of what Raman is, what it can be used for, what it can't be used for, what some of the applications are, and really look at the technique to give you some idea of how to better utilize this technique. Just for a little bit of history, C.V. Raman was the discoverer of the technique and hence the reason why it was named that way. This happened in 1928. At about exactly the same time, there were two scientists in Moscow, Landsberg and Mandelstam, who also were looking at exactly the same thing. Their paper appeared just a little bit after this one. So the technique has always been associated with Raman's name. In 1930, Raman was awarded the Nobel Prize for the technique. Now, the real question is, why if the technique was developed in the 1930s, has it taken so long, 70 or 80 years or more, for the technique to really begin to blossom? Well, there's been a series of developments along the way, technological developments and scientific developments that made this happen. And if we were gonna talk about any one that was the big one, it was the development of the laser by Maimon, Townsend Shallow, and other workers who developed this source, this laser, that is so critical and now so central to the Raman technique. In a sense, the two are intimately linked. So, what we would like to do now is begin to produce or begin to introduce the theory and the operation of Raman and look at the various uh, aspects of the technique in light of what you as a user want to or need to get out of it and how to best do that. So now let's begin.